Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today we're going back to the basics. How do you hear yourself while recording a microphone in Studio One? It's it's a, a basic concept, but if you don't get it right, you might find yourself like a person I talked to recently who couldn't figure exactly how to do this. So he just recorded with headphones, but then he just couldn't hear himself at all. He just kind of trusted that the microphone was picking up his guitar or his voice and then listened to it later to see how it sounds. That's not fun. I don't know. Honestly, it's impressive he got anything good recorded because it's really hard to hear yourself when you've got headphones on and you can't hear the microphone itself. We need a way of what's called monitoring. We need a way of monitoring our microphone while also still hearing what's coming back from the software. So let's say we recorded a guitar and now we're ready to sing. We need a way to hear our voice through the headphones while we're recording. I know that seems very simple, but it can be a bit of a sticking point for a lot of people. So I'm going to talk today, show you there are two different ways to monitor yourself, to hear yourself while recording. The first is software monitoring. The second is hardware monitoring. Basically, we're determining where is the audio coming from? Is it coming from the software, meaning Studio One, or is it coming from the hardware that we have our microphone plugged into? Let's start with software monitoring. But first, let's we got nothing. There's nothing in this session. So let's create a track. I'll press T on the keyboard to open up the add tracks menu. And then we will create a vocal. Yes, one channel. Uh, we're not going to auto color it because vocals are yellow. I have spoken and we're going to change this to input three because that's the input my microphone is plugged into. And I say, okay, now we've created a vocal channel. This is a mono track that we're going to record our vocal onto. Um, when you, if you're new to Studio One, there's a couple of buttons you need to know about. This is the mute button. It mutes the audio. This is the solo button. It solos the audio and mutes everything else. This is the record button, which record enables the track. It's not technically the record button. You press this to say, hey, I want to record on this specific track. And this is the monitor button. This is what we're talking about in this video. This allows me to monitor what's happening on this channel, what's actually coming into this channel. So if I click this, I should hear what's plugged into input three. Let's just see what that sounds like. Here we go. Testing, Testing. One, one, two, two, two. Oh. oh. There's, there's a big, a big old, old there's a big old delay. Almost sounds like a slap back delay. If you had headphones on, what you would hear is just you, right now you're hearing my voice, and then you're, you're also, also hearing, hearing it delayed. Um, this is what it would sound like for you. I'm gonna mute just just one second. Check, check one, two. two. Check, check one, two. two. You see how my voice wasn't lined up with the sound. It's almost impossible to sing to something like that. You're hearing yourself delayed, and it's just, it's not pleasant, it's not fun. So some people might hear that and say, oh, well, well that's useless. I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just record without hearing myself. And so they will record enable, they'll press this button to record enable the track, and they'll, and they'll say, say, oh, no. I don't want to hear myself, so they'll just turn this one off. By the way, there's a setting under this wrench here in the song page, uh, on the arranger specifically, this setting, monitoring follows record. If you have that checked, then every time you record enable a track, it will also so turn, turn this, this on. on. If you don't want it on, you can have that unchecked so it will do them separately. So that's what's happening here. Um, so they'll say, they, oh, oh, this, this isn't, isn't, I don't, I don't like, like that, that delay. delay. So they'll just do this. And they will literally record a vocal without ever really being able to hear themselves. They'll just kind of hope that they sing on pitch uh, and cross their fingers. So that's not a good solution. So how do we deal with this? What do we do about this latency, this delay, delay. that's there? This is happening because the software, we've told the software, somewhere in the software, there is a setting that says, hey, I want you to, when audio comes in, I'm gonna give you a buffer, a certain a number of samples as kind of like a runway that you can use to do whatever processing you have to do on that audio before you send it back out to the speakers. So it allows it gives the computer some room to like do stuff to the sound. So if I was going to throw a bunch of plugins on there, it would give it enough time to do all that and then send it back out. So it delays the audio a little bit. Everything still lines up from a musical timing standpoint, but it all is delayed before it comes out of my speakers so that the audio the computer can process things well. That's called the buffer setting of your software. Every audio software has this. If we go to Studio One Preferences and we come over to 
uh, audio setup and specifically audio device, we'll see this is our audio device. I'm using a Studio Live. And then this device block size, that's what we're talking about. That's that buffer that we're talking about. And as we can see, Studio One actually tells you the latency that you're experiencing right now. We're experiencing 50 milliseconds input latency and then 50 milliseconds output latency for a combined latency of 100 milliseconds. It's even 192 here. I'm not sure how that math works. But anyway, that's a lot of latency. So what can we do? This device block size we can lower. If we lower it down to, let's say, 32 samples, 16 is very low. Your computer might have some blips and plops if you, if you lower it that low. 64 or 32 tend to work pretty well. So I'm going to change it to 32. The audio is going to drop out for a second, and then we're going to test it again. Okay, it takes a moment to adjust, but now you can see input latency is only four seconds. Output latency is less than four, sorry, milliseconds. So a grand total of less than eight milliseconds. In my experience, anything below 10 milliseconds feels fine, and I can sing and play to that all day. If we were to go down even further, it would be a little bit shorter, which might be good. Um, so let's say that's what we want. We hit OK. So now, if I press this button, it's going to sound pretty much instantaneous to my voice. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Okay, so you could hear there was just the slightest bit of delay. If I were to mute this microphone and we only listen through Studio One, my guess is my voice is gonna be pretty lined up with this audio. Check, one, two, three. That I can live with. It's a little bit delayed, but not enough to mess up my timing or anything else. It just sounds like I'm hearing myself back. So this is how you do the first way of hearing yourself when you record. It's called software monitoring. We're listening through the software. A couple important things. Don't put any plugins on the track. Don't put a big old compressor or EQ or things like that because those can also introduce even more latency. Don't have a limiter on your mix bus because that will also introduce latency. It's a good rule of thumb to just not have mixing plugins in there until you're done recording everything. It can be a distraction. Um, you start mixing stuff when you haven't finished recording and you just waste a bunch of time because who cares what the mix sounds like right now? You don't have the, all the instruments in there. Um, but also, the other thing is it can cause some latency that even adjusting the buffer won't fix. So this is how you fix it. This is how we can now come in here and record and hear ourselves nice and clearly. So what's the other option? Because this still technically has the tiniest bit of latency. Um, this is partially because I'm using a regular old USB audio interface. Uh, if I was using something uh, with Thunderbolt, like a Personas Quantum, for example, the Thunderbolt connection allows for even faster latency. So at this same buffer setting, I would have even quicker or shorter latency. So that's one reason to get something like that. For me, however, you can't see it, but I've got a Studio Live digital mixer right here. What does a mixer do? A mixer allows me to plug in a microphone and then hear it coming out of the main speakers at the venue if I'm playing a show. And the thing about mixers is they don't have any latency. When I play, if I'm on stage playing and my voice is going back to the mixer at the back of the room and the mixer is sending a copy of my voice to this speaker on the floor so I can hear myself, I don't hear that coming back with any noticeable latency because that's how mixers are designed to work. So what I do, I use, instead of using software monitoring, which you have to use if you're going to use like an amp modeling plugin for guitar amps, for example. Otherwise, if you're just recording a microphone, I won't use the software monitoring. I won't turn this button on. Instead, I will listen to myself directly from my mixer. Because right now, I can plug headphones into this mixer and I can hear my voice coming off the mixer. Even if I unplug the computer and throw the computer out the window, this mixer still sits here and processes my voice. I can hear my voice all day. So all I got to do is just have music playing back on one channel, have my voice on another, and I can adjust the volumes as much as I want. I can hear myself fine, I can hear the music, and I can record all day. The latency that we talk about doesn't become an issue as far as like making uh, things line up from a timing standpoint. That's all always locked in perfectly. Um, but now I can hear myself without ever having to monitor through the software. 
So there's two ways to do it. Software monitoring is where I'm listening directly through Studio One. Hardware monitoring is where I'm using my audio interface to feed myself back to myself because sometimes they can do it faster than the software can. If you've got some other audio interface, it might come with its own mixing software that allows you to adjust how loud your microphone is in the headphones. That's a, that's a form of hardware monitoring. The box itself has its own little mixer built in that's letting you hear yourself even before the sound gets sent off to the computer. So when I'm working in my studio, 98 times out of 100, I've got my buffer set to something 248 samples because that gives my computer plenty of room to work. I don't have any hiccups in the audio. And then I'm only monitoring off my mixer. So the latency problem, there is, there is no, no latency, latency problem, problem because I never actually click this button. I'm doing all, I'm all in on hardware monitoring. Your mileage may vary, but now you know the two different ways to do this. The simplest form of hardware monitoring, by the way, is if you get something like a, oh, let's find the old, like if you had the old Presonus audio box, this thing, it was either blue or black. You'll notice it was a very simple box, but it has this um, mixer knob on there. You see how it says inputs and playback? That is hardware monitoring. That is allowing you to turn to the left and all you hear are the inputs, the microphones plugged into the device, all the way to the right, you're hearing playback from your software. In the middle, you hear both. So it's a very simple but powerful mixer that allows me to hear my microphone with no latency and then still hear everything that's playing back from the software. If this confused you and you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, watch the video again. Because sometimes these concepts, once you get it, it's going to click and you're going to say, ah, I get it now. I'm going to go do this. And it all depends on what your hardware is. If you're using a simple USB audio interface, if it has a mixer knob like I just showed you, that's the only option you have available. If it has some sort of software that comes with it that allows you to adjust the levels of things that you hear plugged into the mixer, that's how you do hardware monitoring. Otherwise, you're going to have to do software monitoring, which is what I showed you in the first half of this video. Hope that was helpful for you. If you're still confused, leave a comment below and let us know. Thanks for watching. See you.